Recently, my wife and I came back to our car, only to find we had a flat tyre. Neither of us could undo the wheel nuts with the standard tool that came with the car. We can only think the garage that changed the tyres last might have used a powerful air impact wrench to tighten the bolts back on. I started searching the net to see if there might be a compact solution to this problem, which can also be easily stored in the car. I found something called a Powerhand 650, which looked perfect and could be had for around £50. I noticed that this tool also seemed to be sold under the laser name as model number 5621. And here's such an example. So I needed to know if this tool was just a gimmick or if it really could get you out of trouble at the side of the road in an emergency. I decided I would take an old Peugeot 106 that was being scrapped and over tighten seven of the eight bolts and see if this tool could undo all of them. So, wheel one, bolt one, standard 85 newton meters. This one. Bolt two is 85 newton meters plus blue thread lock. Bolt three is 85 newton meters plus red thread lock. Bolt four is 85 newton meters plus JB Weld. Wheel two is bolt five is over torqued to 170 newton meters. Bolt six is maximum air impact plus blue. Bolt seven is maximum air impact plus red lock. Bolt eight is maximum air impact plus JB Weld. And leave overnight. And just for the record, the air pressure to the impact wrenches will be the maximum allowed of 90 psi. So at 90 psi, it's about 7 bar. To make sure the bolts will be locked up as tight as possible, I've used a strong degreaser and wire brush to clean the bolt holes and then the bolts themselves. So I'm going to use some strong degreaser here. Hence I've got the face mask on. And I'm just going to pop that into each of the bolt holes and give it a good clean and get any grease out of those holes so that hopefully when we come to put the bolts in and use thread lock it will bond as tight as it can and then what I'll do is I'll put all the bolts into this strong degreaser Like so, give that a stir around. Just need to number the eight bolt holes and dry them using compressed air. So I'm going to use a white permanent marker here. I've given the wheels a little clean so that the paint adheres okay. So we've got the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Now I'm also going to blow the holes and make sure all that degrease is blown out and any debris is also blown out with it. Make sure you wear hearing protection when doing this and certainly eye protection. So now to putting the wheels back on and tightening the eight wheel bolts. So we'll start with the front wheel. And we're going to do all these bolts to 85 newton meters. But we will be using thread lock and JB Weld on three of them. So I'll get bolt number one in because that's going to be normal. And that will have no thread lock or anything. And will be tightened to the standard 85 newton meters. Like so. And there's our click. Now bolt 2 is 85 newton meters with blue thread lock. And as you might notice, I'm putting that into the hole with the number 4 on. 
So the chap in this video hasn't noticed this, which is me. Click. So that's bolt number two, which is labelled four. Oh, the penny's dropped. <laughs> so now to get some sandpaper. So we'll remove that number four and we'll make that number two. And we'll remove the number two and we'll make that a number four. Right then, so back to where we were. So bolt number three was the red thread lock torqued to 85 newton meters. So we pop that one in. So the red is a more permanent one. And there's our click. So lastly, for number four, we're going to mix a bit of JB Weld. Now this is normally quite strong stuff. So it'll be interesting to see whether that um, tool will actually undo this. Because in theory this should lock it together quite well. And also being wet, it should tighten up quite a bit as well. So we're tightening that now to 85 newton meters. Now onto the rear wheel and the last four bolts, which will all be over torqued. So onto the rear wheel now. So all of these four bolts will be over torqued. So we're tightening these as much as we can before they fail. So this is bolt number five. So we're going to use a torque wrench on this and give this 170 newton meters. Now I know that near 200 newton meters these bolts fail. So I checked that on the other side. So 170 is near stripping point of the thread. And then bolt number 6 is going to be the blue thread lock with an air impact wrench at maximum. So we give that a good drive. That's number six. Now we're going to swap over to the other impact wrench. Both of those guns are pretty powerful. And we're going to use the red on this one now. And remember all these threads are clean and have been degreased. So that's the red, so that's permanent thread lock in theory. Making sure it's really on there tight. And lastly, number eight, which will have the JB Weld on. So those threads are pretty much covered. I've been quite generous there. Going to pop that in. I'll go back to the larger of the two guns. But like I say, both of them are pretty powerful. There's probably not a lot in it. So this thread does seem to keep going a bit. So it might be on the edge of stripping. It is still creeping. So 
So I would say that was pretty tight. 24 hours later. And here's the Powerhand 650, which hopefully will undo all the bolts. I'm going to try and use a Sealy STW291 digital torque adapter to measure the breakaway torque required to undo the bolts, though this model only goes to 200 Newton meters. Okay, so now on to removing the wheel bolts. So I've got this Sealy digital torque adapter. Now this should give me the maximum torque that I apply while undoing these bolts. So remember these were done up to 85 Newton meters. So presumably the torque will be lower than that. Certainly on the first one anyway. And there she goes. So that was the first one that had nothing on it. It was just dry thread. Um, and the breakaway torque there was 61.1 newton meters. Now number two, this had the blue thread lock on. So in theory, I would have thought this would be higher, but it would take more effort to undo. So there we are. Certainly no problem for this tool. And what have we got on there? Oh, I didn't expect that. 59.1. Actually lower. And now the red thread lock was on this bolt number three. So I know what we'll have on this one. So red is the stronger one. 41.2. So not, not sure about those results, why they would be that. Now number four was JB World. So I would have expected this one to be reasonably high. And what have we got on this? 50.9. Results for wheel one. Bolt one was 61.1 newton meters breakaway. Bolt two was 59.1. Bolt three was 41.2. And bolt four was 50.9. The power hand 650 successfully undid all the bolts with no trouble at all. Okay, so moving on to the rear wheel. Now, these were all seriously over -talked. I'm setting up the Sealy there to see what we get on here. So this was bolt five, which was over to 170 newton meters. Now I need to put the handbrake on here. I thought the wheel would have stayed still, but it doesn't. Now checking that. It looks like it's gone over the maximum of the device. Yeah, and it's 239.9 Newton meters. So that's way past. So it's just a case of seeing if the tool will undo these now. I can't measure the breakaway torque. So wheel nut five, no problems there. So then we go on to number six. And that was the one that had the blue thread lock on and was air ratcheted in. And again, we come off there. A bit more effort compared to the front wheel, but certainly nothing that this tool can't handle. Going on to number seven now. And this was the red thread lock. And again, that's a bit stiffer but it is coming undone quite easily. 
So it's looking like this tool is quite useful. And the last bolt, which was JB Weld. Again, that's quite stiff as you can tell. But it it undone it. Results for wheel two. Bolt five was over 239.9 newton meters breakaway torque. Bolt six, seven, and eight were all well over 200 newton meters. Again, the Powerhand 650 successfully undid all the bolts, so I'd conclude this tool really could help you out in an emergency. It certainly might be better than a standard wheel brace. When tightening the wheel bolts back up, you shouldn't use the reflex bar against the ground like you did when undoing the bolts, as there is a serious risk of stripping the bolt threads. Instead, just use the wrench like a conventional ratchet, as shown. So if you were at the side of the road and you need to tighten the wheel nuts back up, you would use it like this as a standard ratchet. So you'd keep both the bars together and do it purely by hand effort only. And then when you got back, you could torque those using a proper torque wrench. But you wouldn't use the reaction bar when doing this because you'll over tighten it. To give an idea how easy it would be to over tighten the bolts if you use the reflex bar. I will set the torque meter to beep at 200 newton meters, bearing in mind the correct torque is only 85 newton meters. So the wheel nuts are already quite tight by hand, so let's just see how little effort is required now. Beep. And that's 200 newton meters now that wheel nut's done up to way past what it should be. That's on the edge of stripping the thread. Try again. You should be able to just hear the beep as it hits 200 newton meters. Yeah, 200 again. As you can see, it doesn't take any effort at all. So you can't use that reflex bar. And the last one. Yeah, there's the beep. So those are now all done up to 200 newton meters. I will now confirm with a standard torque wrench that the Powerhand 650 really did over torque those bolts that easily. So I'm just going to set the torque wrench to 200 newton meters. So we should get an immediate click as soon as we apply any pressure. Yep. So that's 200. So they're all 200 newton meters, completely over torqued. Just out of interest, how easy would it be to undo those bolts with a standard 16 inch breaker bar which is only 3 inches shorter than the Powerhand 650 itself? So this is just a standard 16 inch bar. So obviously these nuts are done up to 200 newton meters. But let's just see how easy it would be to actually undo them. As you can see, that is pretty tight. That one's going to be a bit harder because the camera's in the way. So really I need to be on the other side. So I'm trying to stay out of the way of the camera so that you can actually view what I'm doing. But you can see the tension going on that to try and undo it. So I'm doing it this way so the camera can view but obviously this is a bit dangerous because if my hand slipped or the tool snapped my fist would go straight into the concrete. So you wouldn't do it that way. Not unless you have some protection underneath to 
protect your fist from the ground. So as you can see, pretty tight. Time to take a closer look at this Powerhand 650 in more detail. I will also take the opportunity to lubricate the ratchet and pull while the tool is apart. OK, so we're going to have a look at this in more detail now. So the ratchet sounds quite echoey, so I presume there's no grease in there. So we will re-grease this. So we'll take out the adapter, which is half inch. Now note the position of the like lever, because if you put that in back to front, the ratchet will work the wrong way around. So anyway, so we need to take out four split roll pins so we can remove the reaction bar and the handle. So those should then just slide off, like so. Try and make sure you note the position of everything. And then the rest of the mechanism is held together with two large external circlips and two small circlips. So looking at the mechanism again, you can see how it levers up on that like, lever bar there, which is connected to the ratchet. OK, so let's now take this apart. That's the large circlip and the small pivot pin circlip. We do the same on the other side. And the large one. So these are squeeze apart ones. OK, so now this should all just come apart. I can say note which way it all goes back together, especially the ratchet part. So we've got a washer there, and there's the mechanism. So there's two pulls in this. So again, note the position of like the wedge there, where my finger is now. Note that position in relation to the mechanism. So you make sure you get it back on the right way. So looking up close up, we can see there's two pulls. So they go between alternate pulls. So that effectively gives you a finer ratchet, but using a coarser mechanism. Because one ratchet's going to be engaged while the other one's just ready to be engaged. So it looks pretty good quality. Certainly no grease in there though. Um, some surface rust has developed. I won't actually remove that part from it because obviously if the little spring shoots off and you never know if there's a little ball bearing on the end as well. And I'll never find that in the garage. So I'm going to use super lube. Now I understand Snap-on use super lube. So if it's good enough for their ratchets I presume it's going to be good enough for this. And you don't actually need too much. This is actually a case of less is more. Because you don't want to pack it. And which would then prevent the pulls from actually seating correctly against the ratcheting mechanism. So it does need to be just a small amount just to do the job. So I'm going to carefully try and pull that outwards so I can get the grease in towards the middle of the mechanism without actually removing the mechanism and then I'll push that down and do the same again on the other side being very careful that those don't spring off so hopefully this should be a bit happier now certainly quieter I'm never quite sure why the manufacturers seem to completely forget about grease. I mean, I know they shouldn't be over-greased, but you'd think they'd put something in there. So, OK, so we'll put the ceiling washer, as it were, back on. 
making sure we put that back that's on the wrong side there this is how easy it is to get the mechanism back to front I'm just going to put a little bit of grease on all the parts that actually move together. Yeah, I think I've realised now that should be on the other side. That could have messed things up. A little bit of grease there on the pin. pop a bit on here so this is the pin that actually operates the lever but it's almost like using a crowbar um, and levering it up to force the wheel nut undone a little bit on my hands there that should be enough I'm just going to check that is working the correct way as I pull it up it locks which it is so I can now put the circlips back on. That's it, it's just pinged into place. And then the same again on the other side. And finally, the little pivot one. Well, that's a lot quieter and hopefully it won't rust. I mean, the thing with these is they tend to sit in your car and never get used. Um, but the one time you do need it in an emergency, you don't want it all rusted up. So hopefully this will increase the life of it and make it more usable. So we'll just put those split pins back in. that up and there we are I think that's the job well done I can pop that back in my car now just confirm it's definitely working the right way and it all looks good Seems to be quite a nice tool, that. The technical details on the tool are by using the reaction bar against the floor, a torque multiplication of three and a half times is gained. Maximum torque is 650 newton meters, quality 60 tooth ratchet within the CRV head, and a weight of 1.7 kilograms. Thank you for watching and hope this helped other home mechanics out.